the words Jesus kept have been coming back to my mind today. I wrote this poem back on June 27th. A couple of weeks before that, I would hear the words Jesus kept in my spirit. And kept, if you notice, is in the past tense. The keeping was completed in the past. Jesus was keeping us before he ever formed us in our mother's womb. He was keeping us when he took his last breath on the cross. He was keeping us when he left his Holy Spirit behind to be our helper, our teacher, our comforter, and sanctifier. To be Jesus kept means we are reserved, we're set apart, we're taken, we're spoken for, we're saved, we're held, we're healed. Hallelujah. When we're kept by Jesus, we are provided for by his everlasting love. We are the apple of his eye. He's always watching over us. So I know I shared this point as a post, but I want to read it. It's been four months now, and it still just pours out of my soul. Jesus kept. Jesus kept me before I was saved. Jesus kept me when I misbehaved. Jesus kept me when I gave my life to him. Jesus kept me when the way grew so dim. Jesus kept me when I was down. Jesus kept me when no one was around. Jesus kept me when life was grand. Jesus kept me in the palm of his hand. Jesus kept me when I was wrong. Jesus kept me when I didn't belong. Jesus kept me when I was right. Jesus kept me with all of his might. Jesus kept me when times were bad. Jesus kept me when I was sad. Jesus kept me when times were good. Jesus kept me and through it all I withstood. Jesus kept me when the money was tight. Jesus kept me and made everything right. Jesus kept me when I was scared and unsure. Jesus kept me and his love is secure. Jesus kept me when he was dying on the cross. Jesus kept me when I counted it all but loss. Jesus kept me when he arose from the grave. Jesus kept me when I needed to be brave. Jesus kept me when I was full of fear. Jesus kept me and stays always near. Jesus kept me when I lost my joy. Jesus kept me when the enemy sent others to destroy. Jesus kept me when I was full of hope. Jesus kept me when I was at the end of my rope. Jesus kept me when I was sick and fighting illness. Jesus kept me and he showed me his realness. Jesus kept me and I felt his healing touch. Jesus kept me even when I used him as a crutch. Jesus kept me and he never left me behind. Jesus kept me and he healed my mind. Jesus kept me when I wanted to quit. Jesus kept me when I seemed unfit. Jesus kept me and turned my life around. Jesus kept me and placed my feet on solid ground. Jesus kept me when my faith was strong. Jesus kept me when I was wronged. Jesus kept me when I was broken and torn apart. Jesus kept me and from me he did not depart. Jesus kept me and put me back together. Jesus kept me and made it even better. Jesus kept me close to his side. Jesus kept me, and he is forever my God. Jesus kept me and always will. Jesus kept me and held me get, helped me get over that hill. Jesus kept me, and one day his face I shall see. Jesus kept me, and soon I will praise him for all eternity. I wrote that back on July 27th of this year. And I was reminded of that last night. I was struggling with the enemy again. This is the 17th day that I have been home. Uh, I was diagnosed with COVID on October the 8th. I was still testing positive up, you know, till a little while. Um, Now it's kind of turned into pneumonia. But I felt a tide turning last night. And I know this week I'm coming out of this. Because I began to have this vision. When Jesus went into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights before he came out and started his ministry on this earth. Healing and delivering people of demons and his, gathering his disciples and setting people free. When he went into that wilderness, he didn't have nothing but the spirit and his heavenly father. And he had the word to fight the devil with. He didn't have any any social media. He didn't have TV. He didn't have a way to communicate with other people. He was solely in there 
by himself to fight the enemy, to feel what we feel when the enemy comes at us. And I was having my little pity party, and the Lord said, But Kimberly, you've not been alone. Yeah, you've been in a time of isolation, and you've only seen the doctor in the ER, but you've still been able to pick up a telephone and call people and have them pray for you. You've still been able to minister to people through social media. Jesus couldn't even minister to people while he was in the wilderness. He had nobody. So during this time of what I feel like I've been in the wilderness, I've still had a means and a way to be able to communicate with people, to still be able to watch church services, to still be able to minister to people through my blog and through social media. How dare me get down in my little pity party and say I'm not still being used of God or say that I'm alone. But I'm going to tell you there's one thing that happens when you're in a time of wilderness. You get reconnected with your Heavenly Father in a way you never thought possible. And you get reconnected in His Word. And I'm about to come out of this wilderness. And when you come out of the wilderness, you know what that means. There's a greater anointing. There's a greater fire in you to be able to preach the Word of God. There's a greater assurance in your heart to be able to go and tell people, Look what God has done for me. Look what He has done for me. And I've had to fight the devil in this wilderness. 17 days, it's been a fight. It has been a fight. He has come in my room. He has come in forms. I've had to take him to the Word. I've had to fight him out of my room. I've had to fight him out of my mind. But I have got through and I'm coming through. And I was listening to our church service this morning. And when they got to that song, Throne Room, Hallelujah, Glory Be to Jesus. And they got to the bridge, the veil is torn and the doors fling wide. I see glory as I run inside the throne room. Before you I bow When they got to that, buddy, I was up in my room and I was going around and I was shouting and I was praising the Lord and I felt a shift taking place within my life. I'm coming out of the wilderness this week. I know I am. It has not been in vain. It has not been for no reason. I felt the Lord touch my body through that service, through that service that my church offers online. I felt him touch my body and I'm coming out of this this week. I'm coming out of this victorious. I'm coming out of this slapping the devil down and saying, ha ha, you tried again, devil, but you lost. You're never going to win this child of God. You're never going to get me. You're never going to, let me tell you, you just well go back to hell where you belong because I have an advocate with the Father, and He is here with me, and He's never going to leave me, and He's never going to forsake me, and He has healed me once more. And I believe in my heart of hearts that even any lingering side effects right now in the name of Jesus from this COVID be gone. I believe right now that if there is any kind of what's left in my lungs right now, that God begin to clear that up and that I not have any damage in my lungs and that I not have any damage from this COVID. But I'm going to tell you one thing. It's hard to minister to others if you ain't done been through it. So let me tell you something. Whether your COVID symptoms have been mild or they've been bad, I know what you went through. I can can relate with you. I can feel for you. And I know now, let me tell you, this, this is a real nasty illness. It's not fun. There's nothing fun about it. And I mean, it has been tough. And it has been hard. But God has been faithful. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm coming out of this victorious. I'm coming out of this. And I've got my punching gloves on. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you beyond a shadow of a doubt. I know what God spoke to me while I was while I have been down with this. Let me tell you, there's a greater anointing coming. And there's a new move of the Holy Ghost coming. And people that are in church that haven't had spiritual gifts. God is about to manifest those gifts in your life. He's about to pour them out on you. He's about to pour them out on His church last great revival is on the way it is on the way he has been speaking to me for over 10 years that i am his end time minister and he has had to get me alone and he has to position had to position in me so that i could go out there and i could do what he has called me to do i love y'all and i thank y'all for those that have been praying wholeheartedly i have felt every prayer and i thank you from the bottom of my heart because i feel better than i have felt In the last three weeks. Because God touched me during that song. I didn't have to be in that sanctuary. I didn't have to be in that church. That's what he's wanting you to understand today. Sometimes we can't get to the church. Sometimes we can't get to a preacher. Sometimes we can't get to that prayer warrior. But you don't believe God didn't touch his own son in that wilderness. And give him the strength he needed to get through. He had to rely on his heavenly father. He didn't have nobody else to rely on. That's who I've had to rely on. 
And that's what he's telling you today. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you've been. I don't care who you've been with. God is here today with healing in his hands. God is here today. The day of salvation. It's the day of salvation. It's the day of healing. It's the day of deliverance. He has touched me right here in my bedroom. I felt it. I felt it go from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. I am speaking healed and whole today in Jesus' name.